Maybe it was association and she cut it off right here. I asked her about this and she said, I like the ass, so I kept the ass. This garden is full of very, very strange things. It's mystical. Yeah, I'm fifth generation Moab local. My family is from here for many years and we're settlers. I had a very wonderful childhood. I grew up right here on this property. I never went to church. We are, we are not religious. Our religion is nature. And on Sundays, we would go out into the hills and have a picnic and roam around in the wild desert where there used to be no people. Then in the 80s, um, two local guys who used to be miners and they decided to turn Moab into mountain biking capital of the world, which they did. And a lot of people started coming and it began on the rise very extremely through, through up and through the 90s. I remember in the 90s, they built seven new motels in one winter and everybody was like, what the fuck is going on? And it hasn't stopped since. And it's escalated into uncontrolled growth, exorbitant prices, nowhere to live for regular people, only rich people. It's pretty disgusting. I used to go into the middle of my property and cry at night into the earth and I couldn't figure out why. And I'm still getting a little teared up by it because I'm not an angry person and um, I would drive around and there'd be so much traffic and so many people and, I, and it was just frustrating and I would get angry and I was angry all the time. And I couldn't figure out why. And I ended up going to a, a, a group of people. And the lady told me, she says, anger is a form of grief. And I realized I'd been grieving for the loss of my home and the loss of the planet and a lot of things. I'm sorry, I'm a little teary because it really does affect me. And once I realized what it was, I had to work with it and, and to understand it and try to move past it because it was... It was very sad because I'm a, I love the earth and I love the dirt and there's a lot of uh, destruction of that these days. Uh, the whole Instagram posing and the showing off of everywhere that I've been that you haven't been, it's a no brainer to me. Once you tell them, everyone's going to become there and everything is going to be gone, destroyed and fucked. The, the town can't handle the traffic. They didn't do the traffic before the building. I, I don't know. It's... um. It's just too much too quick. It's too much too quick. It's getting bulldozed like Avatar. Here it comes, overpopulation. And then I was like, ah, nothing is going to slow down ever. We're fucked. I guess I could say stop reading. So this is my art studio. I used to make glass beads for a living. A little messy. It's just some all kinds of crazy art. I used to be into natural building and I went all over the country and in Mexico to study all kinds of building styles and one other section of my life, along with the dominatrix section of my life, along with the glass bead section of my life. I have many sections of my life because I feel it's better to be well-rounded in many different things than to just spend one life doing one thing. I like the pictures of the girls you have up there. Oh, yeah. still, yeah. 2004, that was the best year. Wow. Oh, and then there's my Burning Man section of life when I used to go to Burning Man before it became overpopulated. It's going to Burning Man. I have lots of video and pictures of that. You're easily one of the top five most interesting people I've ever met. <laughs> easily. I've been this way. I was born this way, not to quote Lady Gaga, because I was around way before her. Woohoo! <laughs> Come here and do it. And the inner child is like, why not? Why become old and bleh? Like, always be fun and creative. And, and as far as being who I am. Why not be free spirit? Why be a contained spirit? That's stifling. That's death. It's fun to be free, you know? Fun to express. Express yourself. Madonna, bitches.